If you want to take credit, first, learn to take responsibility. Be different. Leave something worthy. And always remember that you can't take it with you. You're going to have to pass it on. Silicon Valley is responsible for some of the most revolutionary inventions in modern history. From the first oscillator built in the Hewlett Packard garage to the iPhones that I know you're holding in your hands. Social media, shareable videos, snaps and stories that connect half the people on earth. They all trace their roots to Stanford's backyard. But lately it seems this industry is becoming better known for a less noble innovation. The belief that you can claim credit without accepting responsibility. We see it every day now with every data breach, every privacy violation, every blind eye turned to hate speech, fake news poisoning our national conversation, the false miracles in exchange for a single drop of your blood. Too many seem to think that good intentions excuse away harmful outcomes. But whether you like it or not, what you build and what you create define who you are. It feels a bit crazy that anyone should have to say this. But if you've built a chaos factory, you can't dodge responsibility for the chaos. Taking responsibility means having the courage to think things through. And there are few areas where this is more important than privacy. If we accept as normal <clears throat> and unavoidable that everything in our lives can be aggregated, sold, or even leaked in the event of a hack, then we lose so much more than data. We lose the freedom to be human. Think about what's at stake. Everything you write, everything you say, every topic of curiosity, every stray thought, every impulsive purchase, every moment of frustration or weakness, every gripe or complaint, every secret shared in confidence. In a world without digital privacy, even if you have done nothing wrong other than think differently, you begin to censor yourself. Not entirely at first, just a little, bit by bit. To risk less, to hope less, to imagine less, to dare less, to create less, to try less, to talk less, to think less. The chilling effect of digital surveillance is profound and it touches everything. What a small, unimaginative world we would end up with. Not entirely at first, just a little, bit by bit. Ironically, it's the kind of environment that would have stopped Silicon Valley before it had ever gotten started. We deserve better. <clears throat> you deserve better. If we believe that freedom means an environment where great ideas can take root, where they can grow and be nurtured without fear of irrational restrictions or burdens, then it's our duty to change course. Because your generation ought to have the same freedom to shape the future as the generation that came before. Graduates, at the very least, learn from these mistakes. If you want to take credit, first, learn to take responsibility. Now, a lot of you, <clears throat> the vast majority, won't find yourselves in tech at all. That's as it should be. We need your minds at work far and wide because our challenges are great. 
and they can't be solved by any single industry. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I know you will be ambitious. You wouldn't be here today if you weren't. Match that ambition with humility, a humility of purpose. That doesn't mean being tamer, being smaller, being less in what you do. It's the opposite. It's about serving something greater. The author Madeline Langle wrote, humility is throwing oneself away in complete concentration on something or someone else. In other words, whatever you do with your life, be a builder. You don't have to start from scratch to build something monumental. And conversely, the best founders, the ones whose creations last and whose reputations grow rather than shrink with passing time, they spend most of their time building piece by piece. Builders are comfortable in the belief that their life's work will one day be bigger than them, bigger than any one person. They're mindful that its effects will span generations. That's not an accident. In a way, it's the whole point. Being a builder is about believing that you cannot possibly be the greatest cause on this earth because you aren't built to last. It's about making peace with the fact that you won't be here for the end of the story. That brings me to my last bit of advice. 14 years ago, Steve stood on this stage and told your predecessors, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Here's my corollary. Your mentors may leave you prepared, but they can't leave you ready. When Steve got sick, I had hardwired my thinking to the belief that he would get better. I not only thought he would hold on, I was convinced down to my core that he'd still be guiding Apple long after I, myself, was gone. Then one day, he called me over to his house and told me that it wasn't going to be that way. Even then, I was convinced he would stay on as chairman, that he would step back from the day to day, but always be there as a sounding board. But there was no reason to believe that. I never should have thought it. The facts were all there. And when he was gone, truly gone, I learned the real visceral difference between preparation and readiness. It was the loneliest I've ever felt in my life by an order of magnitude. It was one of those moments where you can be surrounded by people, yet you don't really see, hear, or feel them. But I could sense their expectations. When the dust settled, all I knew was that I was going to have to be the best version of myself that I could be. I knew that if you got out of bed every morning and set your watch by what other people expect or demand, it'd drive you crazy. So what was true then is true now. Don't waste your time living someone else's life. Don't try to emulate the people who came before you to the exclusion of everything else contorting into a shape that doesn't fit. It takes too much mental effort, effort that should be dedicated to creating and building. You'll waste precious time trying to rewire your every thought. And in the meantime, you won't be fooling anybody. The fact is, when your time comes, and it will, you'll never be ready but you're not supposed to be. Find the hope in the unexpected. Find the courage in the challenge. 
Find your vision on the solitary road. Don't get distracted. There are too many people who want credit without responsibility. Too many who show up for the ribbon cutting without building anything worth a damn. Be different. Leave something worthy. And always remember that you can't take it with you. You're going to have to pass it on.